All right, all right, we are going live. Welcome, everybody. I can see a bunch of people already waiting, so as soon as YouTube fires it up here, we're going to say hello. Make sure to say hello in the chat as well, you guys. Let me know if you're brand new to the channel here. Say something in the chat. Let me know who's all coming in today. Let me know that sound quality, recording, all that jazz is good so that we can dive into this without any interruptions. Paul, it's good to see you. Brad, good to see you. Comment deleted. Maurice, the wolf, awesome. Glad to see everybody tuning in so far. Hello, everyone. All right, so make sure to smash up those like buttons, you guys, so that we can get this out to lots of people on uh, YouTube. We can take lots of altcoin requests. We can dive into and find some beautiful hidden gems in this video today. And we'll be taking a look at some of my favorites. If you guys have altcoin requests as well, make sure to get those into the chat channel. Remember to do them up with the USD or the Bitcoin or ETH pairing, whatever pairing you want, okay, followed by the exchange. So let's say that you want XRP done. We're going to do XRP versus USD on Binance Exchange. So make sure to put it in that format uh, if you guys are tuning in inside of the chat room so that I can, otherwise I'm just going to probably have to skip over and move to the next one in order to kind of keep things really churning along here. We go pretty fast. Uh, we are going to do a quick update as to Bitcoin and Ethereum. It'll take us just here like seven minutes. And then we're going to dive into the alts, uh, whatever you guys have here. And I'm going to give you three of uh, some of my top ones that I like as well right now uh, that I've shared inside of the Discord. So if you guys are brand new to the channel that's tuning in, then welcome. My name is Shiler and I'm a full-time LA Wave trader in the crypto market since 2017. And I help traders just like you create a full-time income without the full-time hours so that you can live life on your terms. So if you're interested in becoming an independent trader, there's really no better place to learn Elliott Wave than right here at New Wave Traders. So if you want to master the market through the Elliott Wave perspective, I've got an entire system from A to Z that will take you there. Uh, with that being said, you can find me over on Facebook. I've got a free Facebook group if you want to join in. We've also got the Discord community as well, which is a private group. But you can learn more about by going to nwtdiscord.com and at least dipping your toes in the water with a 14-day trial. Perfect. I already see all the requests coming in. Beautiful stuff. Good to see you, Joey. Leisure. Awesome. Ablin. Paul. Awesome. So make sure that you guys are doing the USD or the Bitcoin pairing, whatever pairing you want it with, followed by the exchange. So if you have a request, just like Justin did just now, GRT USD Kraken. Beautiful job. That's exactly the setup that I want in regards to taking requests here, okay? So we're going to be flying through those in just a minute here. Let's go over to the Discord and let's just take a recap here real quick on this chart here on potential bitcoin setups now we did bitcoin and ethereum yesterday as well as dxy and we do that every monday at 9 a.m mountain standard time just like we do these tuesday altcoin scans every tuesday at 9 a.m mountain standard time so make sure to join us for next one or get on the email list so you can get notified of it or make sure to smash that subscribe button down below with that notification bell so that you don't miss the next one now we've got basically what we're looking at here for Bitcoin is an impulse wave. Now, there's always two counts. And if you follow me, you know that I always know about the bear count and the bullish count as well. And we're going to talk about both because it's important to understand when one count is confirmed over the other. And I like to do this in a step-by-step -step process so that there's clarity in understanding how the markets move with the best probability. So right now we're dealing with an impulse wave. And if we come under 43.7 and then under 42.4, the impulse is going to be invalidated. We're going to be dealing with a Third wave failure, which is going to confirm a WXY. So let's go over to the bigger chart here. Let me explain what exactly that means. Okay, so in regards to wave structures and patterns that we see in the market, one in a bullish market that we see for a type of correction is known as a ABC. And it looks something like that. And it makes higher highs and higher lows. And then it launches and it continues on. It's a very bullish type of correction. And if this is going to be that, that's exactly what we'll be looking for here. Otherwise, what we need to do in order to fulfill this to become an impulse wave that takes us up to our more macro targets around $60,000 is for us to basically do some sort of a flat correction up here, make another move up, another flat correction, and then launch. Okay, so this will give us a wave structure that now looks like this for an impulse wave. One, two, we've got a three, a four, and a five. Okay, so... Basically, very simple expectations as to how this market is going to move. We're right in the zone right now that could allow for a rejection. Uh, I'm leaning more towards the bullish perspective here, but that's why we have our invalidation zones so that we understand, hey, if Bitcoin retraces too much and we fall back in underneath the previous high, basically, 
and we lose even this little guy right here, this little block, okay? If we lose that red box, <clears throat> then I need to know what's happening, and I need to know with a high probability. And in this case here, we would be dealing with a WX wire or an ABC, where we'd have some sort of a W, X, and a Y like that, or an ABC, you get the point, okay? And the targets here south would then bring us back to, um, we've got 38,166 and 33,000, both which still presume buying opportunities. You can see the trade setups for it, and we should respect the previous low that's been made over here at $29,000. We should not go underneath that, ideally for this type of correction, okay? So I'll be looking for buy opportunities if this trade here ends up failing uh, towards the downside. So with that being the case, let's go back here. And you can see just where we're at right now. This is our, our critical zone. Uh, pretty simple stuff uh, when we break it down into expectations. Really, we, we want to stay out of this area here. So even if we drop one more time, we want to see a nice buy up like this, maybe some sort of a running flat and boom. Okay, so we want to see maybe ascending channel, something along those lines <clears throat> for us to move upwards. Maybe even a sideways channel would be fine too. get more of that uh, bull flag. But we don't want to spend here too long. We definitely want to try and move up and make those higher highs. Okay. Well, ETH is doing the same thing. It's important that we know what ETH is doing in regards to Bitcoin as well, because there are majors. And if we're going to be diving into altcoins today, then we need to have an idea as to, hey, if Bitcoin is going to fail and break those invalidation numbers, what will that do to alts? Okay. And that will help create a bias for us when we're looking at the, both the bull and the bear scenarios when it comes to altcoins today as well. Okay. So ETH here next, we had a really cool video uh, that I did inside of the Discord. Uh, one of the benefits of being in there. And it really broke down on an educational standpoint, um, basically being able to see when your indicator is giving you a false signal and how it's going to break towards the upside, even though there might be bearish divergence that's forming instead. And so I talked about that in a video inside of the Discord. I'm not going to do it here in respect of time. We're going to be focusing on alts and so forth today. But basically what we're looking at here is we've got a five wave move. It's either the start of something or the end of something. Very, very simple in that case. If it is the start of something, we'll see a, a pullback pull here, which basically respects the 1624 level here. We can see either a bullish flat like this, just like what we're looking at with Bitcoin, right? We're talking about it creating a flat up there. We want to see ETH do the same thing. So some sort of a flat correction up at the top here, and then we can really launch for a, a full on impulse wave. That's if it's the start of something. If it's not the start of something, it's the end of something, then we're going to come down into this territory underneath 1620 and even break uh, the 1480 low here. Uh, and in that in that manner, we would be looking for south targets. So what the expectation here is a sideways flat and staying above 1620. Okay, that's our ideal scenario here for ETH in regards to that. So if we retrace down, we can look at potential longs with an invalidation under this previous low and then looking for that impulse wave to break all the way towards the upside. Okay. So since we know what was going on with ETH and we have a, a bullish and a bearish perspective on both Bitcoin and ETH, we can go ahead and we can dive into altcoins here next. So let's go take a look at the list here. I see lots of people streaming in. So make sure to smash up that like button so we get this video out to lots of people and they can you know, be able to uh, benefit from all the altcoins that we're going to be going over today per your guys' requests here. If you guys are just brand new joining in, then I'm taking requests inside of the chat. You can see people uh, putting in their pairing followed by the exchange. So make sure that it's in that order, such as Justin did GRT versus US dollar on Kraken exchange. That's perfect. Make sure to put it in there. We'll go through this as fast as we can. <coughs> if I don't lose my voice. All right, all right, you guys. All right, first one that we're starting off with here is it looks like it's going to be Make sure I'm not missing any here from the peeps that were in nice and early. Ah, there we go. HNT USD Binance. Are we completing wave four, wave five minimum price targets? Got it, Brad. Let's take a look. So, HNT USD. So, I think we took a recap on this one last time too, right? We were dealing with that big impulse wave overall. Um, definitely a little bit of a choppier of a climb, but it's still in that same momentum. So, uh, this is what we're going to be looking at. We have this back here as a wave one, two. This is our three that we're going into a four and a five. Uh, so what that looks like, nice. You guys know my famous squiggles in this case, something along those lines. So most alts, just to kind of give us a, a pre 
header or whatever are most likely going to be in some sort of a fourth wave right now it appears so we'll see how this kind of pans out as we go through more we'll get better validation of that but for the most part most of them are going to be in wave fours which is going to set us up for good trades for the fifth waves towards the upside okay so uh we've got an extension here that we want to pull So I'm switching between log and linear scale just to see which one we're respecting a little bit better. Um, it definitely changes. So in this case here, we'd be at a 2.236. So I'd look for my fifth wave to be along a 2.618 or a 3.236. Let me throw one more on there. And let's just check that log scale out as well. So in log scale, we haven't even hit up on the 1.618 just yet. We're in price discovery basically from uh, previous, you know, opening uh, of price back here. This is obviously tons of support. So we definitely don't want to break back down underneath. That's a big no, no. And we want to, we, but we're going to need to create some sort of a sideways movement up here. So in that case here, this, I'm not going to try and break this structure down right here because I can already tell there's quite a bit of uh, back and forth chop in that regards, but we do want to continue respecting the trend line from there um, in regards to this being a third wave. Once this third wave actually breaks, so it, it could be something like this, right? Where we base, keep moving up like this here, and then we finally break it, and then we'll do a larger flat here sideways like that. That would be the motion as to what this path would take here. And since we're already on a linear scale are up here around the 2.236, I could see maybe this trend line being respected up to the 2.618. Um, and it's, just, it's on a good 45 degree angle. Um, so I like that. I would say price target up here at 456 um, for that to move up to. But overall, we're looking at a general flat here. Um, I definitely wouldn't be looking at everything's too tight in regards to this, but we're respecting previous lows. So if you look at this structure here, and I, I'm trying to think in the sense is like, how how would I get into this if I was forced to have to try and trade this right now at this price zone? And the reality is, is each one of these previous lows are being respected. So we should expect this previous low back here at 317 to be protected and for this trend line to continue on for another move towards the upside here and something like that. Um, and if it does get broken, then the next area that's going to get defended is going to be 272. And I'd look for buys down on this trend line down here instead. Uh, you know, we've got the macro wave structure, but when we get into the smaller stuff here, this is pretty sloppy. So we got to play it from a more um, structural standpoint than we can from a wave standpoint. Okay. So, but that's the way that I would do it. I'd assume that this low here would be protected because all the other ones previously have been. All right, let's go to, we got Tron USD on Kraken next. <clears throat> I haven't looked at Tron in a good minute. Let's, uh, USD pairing. Let's go out to a daily here. I'm going to assume that maybe this is a crack in wick. So let me just check one other exchange here real quick, just so I'm getting some proper data. Nope. We had that big rejection there too. So this is pretty nasty overall. That doesn't look pleasurable to trade in or even try and have a position in as it's just so volatile. There's way better trading assets than that right now. I would recommend pointing people towards those directions um, instead of something like this right now. So especially when we have these big pumps like this, they've all gotten rejected every single one of them um and we've come back down to zero so i don't i would i would presume the same thing to happen here as well uh that probably from here we'll have some big sell-off that comes back down to this range and then just jackhammers around for a bit until it wants to do another big pump and then just you know it, that's the pattern that it's been creating there's really no rhyme or reason to this asset here it's not trending um sure yeah you've got higher highs and higher lows from back here in this regards but to actually having a smooth wave structure that's actually tradable in my opinion uh, i would say that where i'd be looking maybe for longs back down in this range with stops under these previous lows back here uh, and then hoping and wishing for that next big pump that does something like this right there so this would be untouchable there's really nothing appealing about that um and it, given how high up it is right now i would definitely be staying away from it as well but that's just me like i said better trending assets
So hopefully that's helpful, but uh, you know, not much to really go off of in regards to a wave structure standpoint and how to actually trade this right now. I wouldn't be shorting it by any means. Obviously, you're stepping in front of some really big candles, but I also wouldn't be expecting it to just go to the moon uh, because there's really nothing supporting that bias. Uh, so it, it's it, it's all speculation at that point. There's better better ones than that, I think. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. One inch USDT by Leisure. So I'm definitely a fan of one inch. I think they've got a beautiful user interface. And uh, we got USDT Binance, I think that was. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So see this much better wave structure, right? Not a bunch of crazy wicks in this or anything. It's trending very hard. And we're definitely creating some sort of a fourth wave up here. So the way that I, I can see the structure kind of filling out now is some sort of a wave one and a two down here. All of this being a three or four and then another five to go. Now, anytime that we're dealing with the origination of an asset like this, when it hits the exchange, we don't really have price data to go off of. It's hard to try and label this as like a wave one uh, per se from the from the absolute zero uh, and calling that a wave one. Sometimes our trends just start from over here. Um, and, you know, and that being the case, you'd have like a one here, a two, and then you would have a three, a four and a five. It really in this case, it doesn't matter because we're still dealing with a third and a fourth wave that we have here. And we can see a very clean structure in this degree right here. One, two, three, four, and five. That is obviously the third wave. And <clears throat> looks like I need my RSI on here. So let me grab my other one here. All right, so in this regards here, let's go back off a of log and come back to linear. And I would prefer to pull this fib from here and here, and that'll give us good fourth wave targets. Uh, the 382 and 236. I'm gonna put the 0.5 on there just because we really don't wanna come down underneath that. And what I'm gonna do here is that we've already got a subway four degree. We're already down here at the 382. We saw a nice buy up off of that right now. So I'd really like these previous lows here to get respected and not get broken. And that basically puts us at 428 and the low here at 435. So, and this guy here should ideally get protected at the low of 430 on the mark. So that's gonna be our best area of support right there. We don't wanna drop underneath that. But if we do, let's just go grab a smaller time frame run in here. So we really don't have any four hour support until we get back down here, which is going to be too deep for a fourth wave. So we're going to go down another time frame to another degree. And now we can start to see these little blocks in here a little bit better. So in this regards, this would be with my area of interest right there. So again, it still protects that previous low. So it's, it's really important that we don't go back down underneath basically 430 um, in that regard. So what I would expect to see here, it looks like we have a double zigzag. So this is a WXY. So boom, boom, and boom. So a double zigzag is where you have an ABC followed by an ABC. So you can see the ABC there. You get an X wave, ABC. So WXY, double zigzag correction. This here looks corrective, does not look impulsive. So more than likely, this is going to connect here for another leg up. And we want to let me grab my rectangle here. This guy is going to be that support for it in order for, to kick us back up to a, a new high here. And then, like, this is obviously pretty normal resistance. Come on. Computer's lagging up on me. All right. That'll reload that. And we got to go back to the other exchange. Sorry, guys. I just ordered in some RAM to basically throw it into this thing to so that won't happen anymore after I get that installed. All right. So coming back over here, 
basically what we're looking at is support here kick up for another leg here that'll give us a three wave structure that's our first leg down right there and we've got five there this is a diagonal so that definitely tells me that's the end of a structure so i would expect this to basically do another flat like this or some sort of a triangle okay so we want to see basically consolidation up here. Once that pattern starts to form, we either see a nice big B wave on any sort of a pullback. All of this is good buy territory. If we see the price congestion here uh, for a triangle, basically all great buy territory with stops underneath the previous lows. So as soon as maybe this prints another low here, right, we can use that as an expected uh, stop area as well. So this is the way that I basically be looking at this right now. And... I would expect this pattern to form out. So if I got in now, I would have to have some patience because we're really going to have to float and sit through this. And I know that if we drop underneath this low, we're probably making a move, you know, down as a one-to-one -one extension of this guy here, probably making a move down like this. Um, and so I would, I'd want to be out of that trade. I wouldn't want to sit through that. Uh, and I'd want to look at trying to re recatch a bounce or something along those lines. Okay. So that's one inch on USD here and the potential trade setup. As always, you guys, not financial advice, right? This is just my way of looking at the markets, how I trade it, and sharing that with you guys. It's I do this mainly so that you can see the system applied that I use in order to trade and understanding the markets from an Elliott Wave perspective. But ultimately, it's more important and does you justice more to go and become an independent trader, teach yourself, learn the system, and be able to apply it on your time that fits your lifestyle, not necessarily coming in here and saying, oh, here's the trade that I'm going to take for the week and run with it. Because... Without the knowledge that I have, you can't manage this trade thereafter. And there are multiple components to being a successful trader, not just being able to identify a trade setup. And most people that do identify trade setups don't even have a strategy for their, where their stop loss goes or how to determine their targets and so forth. They only have one of the three components. So I, I just tread that out there with caution in the sense that you can, this is a profession, you got to develop a skill for it, right? Uh, just like if you're going to become a doctor or a lawyer or anything like that, trading is the same way. Just because there's no barrier entry to getting into the doors for trading doesn't mean that everybody can do it, which is why 95% of traders fail, right? So treat it like a profession, put the work in to learn this, invest in yourself to educate yourself, just like you would by going to college or getting a degree somewhere to get a higher paying job. If you want to make more money in trading, invest in yourself um, in order to do that. Okay. So I'm going to always preach that every single time. All right, let's go to the next one here. Uh, Waves USD Kraken. So one inch looks really nice though. That was definitely one of my faves there. I like that wave structure. I like that type of price congestion that we're most likely looking at getting there. That's really nice. Okay, so waves here, we're gonna go out to a daily. So lots and lots of price data here to work off of. So this one's interesting. It's already got five waves to it. So one, two, three, four, and a five. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, and a five. So what this means when we're actually getting this wave up here, there's two things that it's going to be, okay? Narrows it down really simple for us. It's either going to be an extended fifth wave that we're dealing with, and this is wave one and two of the extended fifth wave, okay? I got to like shrink this down quite a bit to be able to show you what that looks like. But it goes something like this. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I'm not a fan of this wave one down here, but it, you know, obviously that's what it is. So that's how this asset moves. Maybe that's the type of wave structure that it prints. It's something that you should take note of um, in, in regards to this asset. So one, two, three, four, five. Well, if this is an extended fifth wave, then it goes something like this. And then this becomes a wave one of your fifth wave. One, two, this is three, four, and a five. Okay, ultra turbo bull scenario um, in this regards. Absolutely nuts looking in regards to this. You're going from 10 bucks, basically over a hundred. Um, and the way that you you grab the target for this is from zero, three, and four, and you actually target 1.618. So we'd go down more like this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and your wave one here is gonna have a one point, it's gonna be like a normal wave one. 1 1.618 is where your third should go. Here's your fourth, and then your fifth. Since there's no confluence between 2.236 and the 1.618 here, I would imagine that at this point, in an extended fifth, Something that is very typical that we get at the top of a structure is expanded flats. Think about it. You have a very, very bullish market anytime you get an overextended wave. Typically, we see these overextended waves inside of your third wave. But in this case, 
the third wave wasn't very bullish, right? We didn't hit a 1.618, at least from what I can tell. Let's, let's look here. All right, I guess we got, we got close, but it's a normal third wave. 1.618 is a normal third wave, right? So the third wave didn't get overextended and tag the 2.618, which means that it opens up the probability that the fifth wave will be overextended because there's typically, you can't have two overextended waves in the same cycle, but which is why the fifth would become overextended in this scenario. So hopefully that makes sense as to why the doors would open for this and that it's not out of the realms for something like this to basically happen. And that is good to know this. Now, on a more bearish perspective, what's the other thing that we see at the top of a five wave when we've already broken the high? Well, you're going to definitely see divergence that's already forming most likely. And the reason for that is because it's creating a B wave. So you would have something like this, A, a B, and then you get a C down. And normally these Normally, in this scenario here, when it's at the top of a five wave run up, we're going to deal with an expanded flat, not a running flat. That's going to be the most likely scenario in this case, which means that this cycle is done and we're correcting it now. And then we're looking to continue another cycle thereafter of a larger degree. OK, that would be the expectation of it. So this is important. What I'm going to talk about next is the invalidation of the red count, OK, because the red count always comes to a very specific level. And it's known as the expanded pocket. So if I throw these two yellow lines on there, okay, we're right in that pocket right now. And I'm going to check the, and we're in it in linear two. So right now is the time that if this is going to be turned into a B wave, and that's what we talked about with Bitcoin as well, right? There's your ABC in regards to that. And killing me maybe i'm just trying to go too fast for for this thing uh anyways you guys get the point abc okay uh and then we get rejected here so this gets invalidated at the 1.618 so at this point this if we go over 1391 the only thing that i can assume is going to happen is going to be an overextended third leg okay and we have targets for that our targets up here are at 54 and 70 bucks basically so, and, you know, that's what I do here. And then I'd even go to linear scale and on a more realistic note, right? We would probably look at 16, let me get rid of this one. We'd look at 1653 as a take profit. Okay. So, and we, we definitely don't want to ignore that because linear scale has a more conservative setup here. So obviously 1688, that's already, you know, a 50% gain in that matter, a 60% gain. That's plenty of a move up. It's just that if we move to a log scale, obviously we're looking at a much different number in that regards. So we'd have a take profit. Stop would be underneath this previous low. Take profit at 1688 and then look for that move towards the upside. Okay. So that's how I'd look at this uh, structure, whether or not we get rejected here. It's pretty dangerous to try and enter in right here. But obviously I would say that we can't come underneath and encroach. If we're going to be impulsive, right? We can't encroach on previous wave structures because then we're overlapping and we're breaking rules at that point. So in this case here, we could also have a stop down underneath this guy. Like that, and then look for that move towards the upside. And we can bring the entry down here a little bit lower. So something like that. Again, dangerous trying to buy up the highs here, but this is the overall two wave structures that I'd be looking at forming out and we'd have confirmation that the ABC is playing out instead once we got rejected back into this realm here. Okay. Um, let's take a look at uh, XRP USD call. So XRP USD. So we talked about this one in, in yesterday's video. I probably just directed you to go and just tag that one there. Um, you know, me personally, XRP isn't a good trending asset at all. Uh, there's really, you know, it doesn't have any sort of a trend going on uh, and it's, you know, so I, I don't trade it. It doesn't look worth it to me by any means like that. It basically just pumps and then dumps. Um, and it's been doing that since its origination. So that's kind of my bias over on XRP overall. Um, yesterday, we talked about it basically doing a small little wave up and then dumping some more. So that's kind of where we're at we're at with XRP. GRT, USD Kraken. So this is another great project that I really like as well. Got a good use case behind it here. All right, so right now we're creating a, basically you guys can all see the, di uh, the diagonal type of formation here, 
all right and what we want to see is we want to break up on top of that back test it and then take off okay so we've seen uh these patterns play towards the upside multiple times especially in nice bullish trending markets because we're still respecting those previous lows so even on a daily time frame here right this and on a more longer term kind of investment hold where's my triangle there we go rectangle so this right here is obviously the major support we don't want to break down and if we break underneath this wedge and we and this we're most likely going to break the rectangle here as well and then drop back down into this level and we'll probably at that point be dealing with a leading diagonal as a wave one so it'd be something like this instead where we have one two and then a three or four and a five okay so but until until that happens we don't have that confirmation until we really break this range here that this is some sort of a leading diagonal and so in that case we can assume that this structure here is going to break up um because we've been in a nice trend anyways and then look for that move towards the upside so i'm still you know bullish on this even if we do pull back it just offer a better entry and i'd definitely be interested in this zone right down here uh for my wave two okay um All right, let's see, catching up on some of the chat here, you guys. I appreciate all the requests and engagement. Uh, Ablin, BNB, USD, Binance. Okay, we got 20 more minutes of this, you guys. So we'll keep on flying through these. That's a nice daily candle there. Let's zoom out. We got lots of data to go off of in regards to this here. All right. So definitely, uh, you know, this one's been around since 2017. So we've got all of this being our wave one down here. This is the, it looks like a big flat to me. Maybe this is another, it kind of looks impulsive actually. Maybe another uh, move in there. Let's try this instead. So it, that would be maybe a one and a two. Uh, that would make a better one, two. And then this would all be a three. Let's grab some extensions in regards to that. So we've got a 1.618 at 282. Let's check the linear scale. We've already overextended past the 2.618. So in this regards, we've definitely got one, two, one, two down here. And then we're in the middle of the third. So obviously can't touch it at this point. Uh, pretty, you know, stupid, dangerous to j jump into the top here. If I were to trade this, this would be something more that I'd be interested in on like a one minute, three minute time frame because of how, how bullish it is, right? And then using my strategies down here because it's trending so well, just looking at longs each time we pull back and protecting the previous lows. So that's, that would be more of interest to me on this one rather than, uh, you know, at on the daily and even on the four hour, even the one hour, it's up there too high already. So we need to see on a macro scale, we need to see some sort of a fourth wave form out. So we're going to see some sort of a big sell off. And whatever that first sell off is, we probably will respect that low from there on out. So we'll probably do something like that, some sort of a big flat, right? And we'll respect that first low. And so that'll offer up buying opportunities any, anytime we come back down to revisit that area um, on, on a higher time frame here. All right, so um, that's, I mean, we're definitely in a third though. Got to wait for the fourth to fill out on a higher time frame, and then looking for another fifth. And we can even go down to a four hour here as well. And you can see that we are most likely dealing with an extended fifth wave inside of the third wave. So that would look something like this, where we basically have a one down here, or two, this is your three, this is your four, and then here's your extended fifth. So we should probably be coming into an area here where we start to see a fourth wave fill out or see some sort of a hard rejection in this case. I wouldn't be trying to short it, but like I said, if I were to try and trade this at all, it would be down there on the one three minute time frame. It would be scalps in and out every one, 2% uh, gain kind of thing. Uh, and that's it. So that's uh that's what I got for BNB USD there. Um, so 
Matic USDT on Binance Crypto Machine. You got it, man. Good to see you in here. Maurice, if you want to do Litecoin, you got to put a pairing with it. Remember, you guys put a pairing and an exchange to it. Okay, so and apologies if I skip anybody at all, but uh, trying to keep up with the chat here in regards to uh, busting this out. Uh, so our next one is Matic USDT. All right, so huge move on this one as well. Dealing with a one, two, one, two down here. We're in the third of that right now. So we're probably going to be dealing with some sort of a small correction, another wave up, and then a bigger correction, and then another wave up. So we should basically start to stair step up in this territory here in regards to uh, this wave structure down here. I'd probably start my count somewhere in here. Um, as a one, a two, and then we've got this being a three, a four, and a five there. So we still have the sub wave, fourth, and uh, fifth wave here to form out, which means, I mean, we haven't started any sort of divergence. So we should start a divergence between these two peaks, and then again between this peak and this peak here as well. Okay, so that's how that should basically kind of form out as we start to create that topping structure. So if I were already in Matic in this sense, I wouldn't be interested in these price levels up here without some sort of a... a uh, correction forming out and being on a, a, say a smaller time frame. We're definitely trending on more of a uh, daily to a four hour time frame here. And we can count this all back here as basically some sort of a wave one, a two, this is your three at that point. And then we'd be looking for an even bigger four and a five as well. So it can definitely get bigger, definitely more room for growth here. But at this point in time, we're probably starting to come into some areas of correction instead. And it'll probably get pretty volatile. Um, smaller time frame trades and swings would be uh, more my preference in this territory here. So I can see one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So again, the small little fourth wave here. We're going to respect these previous lows. So if I can get a pullback into this range here, I could have my stop under this guy here and then be looking for you know this smaller move or this move up here. For me personally, that's a little bit too wide on the on the stop. Um, but I know that it's a really safe spot because what are the chances that these previous lows are going to get taken out, right? If they did, it means that our entire wave structure would collapse on itself and we'd be dealing with some sort of a C structure and then making a move towards the downside. So it's very important for the bulls to defend these previous lows in that case. So I know that if we broke them, something pivotal would be happening in the market behavior. We'd have a big change, okay? So... But ultimately, I see some more flags forming out here, some more upside potential as well. Um, in regards to actual targets, you know, we're at the 2.618 right now. So we've already got that overextended third. Alts get even more aggressive than 2.618. So it wouldn't surprise me for the third to really end up here closer to maybe 3.236 or even 3.618, which would put us somewhere around with a, a final fifth wave target at the 4.236, which is a pretty typical one for us to hit. So this overall structure here could potentially get up as high as maybe 13 cents uh, from what I can see here with this with this wave structure. Okay. Um, but it's trending nice. So longs, I wouldn't be interested in shorts, definitely looking at longs here and expecting previous lows to get defended. Stay funky. We do this every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So we do alt requests every Tuesday. EOS USD for Kraken uh, by Hydro. You bet. So, in fact, we've already got the watch list over here. I haven't looked at EOS in a while. Let's see. I can already tell from the, the jacked price action there, though, that this doesn't look very appealing. But let's take a look at it. Ugh. Yeah, definitely... Not something that's super sexy overall. Um, let's take a look here though, because we obviously, you know, we want to break this downtrend um, by crazy resistance right here. So getting above that is going to be key one and a back test of that, just from a structural standpoint, to be able to at least do this sort of a move here, um, like that. So be more interested in maybe a breakout trade above that level with a stop under some sort of a previous low here, something like that. At which point now we're dealing, you know, this back here, the reason why this is so stuck in my opinion is that this is such clearly a three waves, you know? And so 
this structure here is some sort of a flat that will probably connect this leg here towards the upside, but it's just it's not that appealing to people, um, right? When we have all these other alts that are just doing massive gains, uh, you know, this is this is pretty stuck over here. We'll come back up to, you know, this would match up and tap in perfectly into that resistance right there, at which point, you know, we would want to presume uh, that this is going to be a reversal it, because it started off with three waves down here. We'd have to get another three waves and then break high again like that, see some sort of a flat, and then that structure could launch at that point. So there's still probably lots of room in regards to time for this thing to actually fill out as it creates some sort of a um, diagonal, just because there's nothing else I can make out of this three wave structure right here. So this is probably a likely scenario for EOS, which means like, yeah, there is upside. I think it's just going to be an underperformer versus the other assets that are in the market right now. So that's kind of my overall bias on that. You know, you could look for that. We uh, ideally won't come back down in this case underneath wave two territory, right? Which is going to be down here in this red box. So we'll, we'll stay out of this area here um, and we'll probably try and re respect some sort of an angled trend line like this, right? I can't draw an actual trend line just yet because we don't have enough pivots, um, but in retrospect to what type of degrees we see in the market, this would be a likely scenario for EOS in order to try and make a move towards the upside. So maybe it's gonna just be a laggard um, in that sense. Uh, if it moves up any higher than that without respecting this sort of a uh, price pattern, then it's gonna be a, a complex structure, which means that like some sort of a W, X, Y, X, Z, where we go W, X, Y, um, you know, X and Z, something maybe along these lines, instead if it's not going to respect um this structure down here so that would maybe be the more bullish scenario in that case but really the only things i'd be curious at looking at is how do we respond to this react this resistance box here and if we come up on top of it and we come back and we back test it those are really going to be the buying opportunities again right here as well right we break this we come back we back test it again the back test is going to be the buying opportunity um, very, very kind of simple structure there in regards to this. I wouldn't overanalyze it in regards to wave structure because the wave structure on it is shit. Okay. Um, so star code hex USDC. Looks like it's just on Uniswap. Well, from a daily perspective, there's really not a lot to go off of in regards to this here. Let's drop down to a four hour. Okay, so. You know, again, there's not enough wave structure to really do anything in regards to this. Obviously, you've got your basic, your, your basic support level there. Shouldn't come back down underneath 0 0.0106. So we should, you know, protect that area right there. And. At this point, given the wave structure, this is probably one move in itself. Um, so if this, maybe this is correct. If we, maybe we can do some sort of a flat here still like this. That could be one way to look at it and then try and make that move towards the upside. Uh, again, this being the support though that you don't want to break, even, even with a running flat, I'd still want to see this move um, up there like that. So my bet, best bet up here at this price level, I'm not, it's not of interest. Maybe if it were to pull back down here, I would try and attempt at it like this. Um, you know, stop would have to be under the previous low because we're doing an ABC and we're looking for a running flat. So, and the previous low is down here at 0 0.009. Uh, so about 12, 13, 14% away there. And then looking for that to actually break up for a wave three. So I don't like the corrective uh, structure that I see right here because there's this is too big of a drop with, with nothing matching up with it. So there's no buddy for that drop. It's just a single drop all by itself, which in time doesn't make a whole lot of sense in regards to the run up. So I think that I would be more comfortable taking a, a trade once it actually pulls back to establish or confirm the support that, it, you know, that it broke out of here um, and then look for that launch towards the upside at that point. Better RR as well in that case. Um, let's see here. So Got about eight minutes left, champs. I appreciate you guys' time here so far. If you're new to the channel, say hello in the chat. I'd love to kind of put some new names to everybody here. 
uh, that's streaming in. We do this every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, so make sure to come join us for the next one. And you can join us for our live streams on Monday as well. <clears throat> uh, too much talking. Um, as well at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Mondays. So join us for the majors. We go Bitcoin, Ethereum, and DXY on Mondays. If you guys want more exclusive updates outside of that, come on over to the Discord. Love to have you in there. You can get a 14-day trial by going to nwtdiscord.com. I'll put the link in the in the chat room for those that are interested in learning more about that. All right, so uh, Hex there we talked about then. Store J USD on Kraken. Let's do Store J. Haven't looked at that one in a while. Not a big fan of the wave structure on that. Let's go out to a daily here. Mm. So unfortunately, we're coming right into that resistance zone right now where we're going to see probably a little bit of sell pressure come in. Okay. Uh, and given the wave structure that we're really coming into it, uh, th I mean, that's a pretty kind of like more of that break here. Something like that. So this is probably where things started really shifting for us. We ended up making a, it's like, I guess, more of a triple bottom or double bottom reversal in that regards. And then here would be the neckline for it. So we'd be looking exactly for the, the red box to the top as the target point um, in regards to right here. So we're at the target for this break after we broke this trend line here. So really, I wouldn't be interested in this until we actually do some sort of a back test. In this case, maybe we either consolidate up here and bonk our heads on this resistance a couple times to push through it, back test, boom, boom. That would be a good wave structure to see fill out in regards to this here. Okay, so my areas that I'd be interested in actual setups are the retest here, okay, with stops under these previous lows here where those are formed at, and then looking for this to just, you know, price discovery and let the waves fill out um, and really not making any moves until we start to correct in that sense. Uh, the other option here is let's do a little bit of a different scenario where we actually get a pretty hard rejection and pull back here to this area and then look for that move towards the upside, right? And so I'd look for another setup down here with the stop basically under these previous lows here uh, because this is some sort of, we'd have if this is an impulse wave, we'd have some sort of a, that on there, some sort of a wave two in here. So we probably, a, a pretty crappy wave one, but in regards to this, this is our wave two area, just from a structural standpoint. So we would look at this being a wave one, a two, pulls back to the previous support, right? Uh, that was resistance, flips it, and then we launch from there and we're dealing with a one, two, one, two count instead. Okay, so those would be the two ways that I look at this. Not really anything to touch right here in this current price zone, um, in my opinion. If we just shoot right through this, well, I'd just leave it be. There's plenty of other assets with better trade setups. I wouldn't FOMO into something. Um, just because it's moving a little bit more aggressively, et cetera. But teach their own. We have plenty of momentum traders as well uh, that do know those types of strategies uh, well. Uh, and, that, and good for them. Uh, in that case, I'm not one of those traders, right? I focus more on catching the bottoms of the corrections and so forth uh, uh, when we're trending in a bull market and tops when we're going in a bear market. <clears throat> All right, so... Uh, Phil USDT on Binance for 618 trading. Let's check it out. Phil USDT Binance. See how much time we got here. We got four minutes, guys. Ooh. So, I mean, a nice daily candle there to start things off, but there's really not a lot to go off of here. Um, this is all going to be structural in the sense that we're looking at basically supply and demand, support and resistance uh, when we have an asset like this. So, you can see that the last. Go in here. This was basically the last place that we had sellers. So this is basically all a supply supply zone up here. Okay, so we should expect some sort of selling pressure to come into here. Um, if it doesn't, and we can just rip through this, then we should expect this to flip to a support zone instead. So, um, you know, obviously key level there. It, so if we pull back, I'd be looking at longs on that point. So let me show. So if we did something like this, Right, I'd be looking at longs in this territory with stop under here, um, and then looking for that to really make a move towards the upside. 
And if we make a, let's change the color here. Let's say that we make a straight move up instead. Oh, not what I wanted. Say we make a straight move up here instead like that. I'd be looking for us to come back and either find support on the top of this guy here, right? And then try and kick off from there. Uh, and have a trade set up with that with a stop under this territory, under this box here. <clears throat> Unfortunately, these are really your only two areas for stops, right? So uh, there's not a whole lot of data to go off of, at least on the higher time frame. This is for more of a macro trend swing trade, longer term investment hold in this sense. But there's not a whole lot of data. I don't know anything about this, uh, this project um, at all. So this is just pure speculation in regards to, from a, a, an analysis standpoint, what I would be looking for. We can go into a smaller time frame right here, but it's important to know that bigger picture because if we don't understand where the higher time frame support is at, then your smaller time frame support, when it gets broken, you're not going to know where it's going and have a, a trading plan for it. So we could go into, say, a 15 minute and we could dissect and break up this wave structure in here. <clears throat> okay. And I'd see this as probably some sort of a one, a two. This is all a three and a four, and then we're getting an overextended fifth wave here, which looks like it's about to hit target with another fifth wave. So something like this, and put the 1.618. Check out a log. Is that even worse? It is. It's way up there. So one, two, three, four, five. Maybe my count comes from over here instead then. Makes it a little bit worse. Well, given the size of this lake here, we definitely got a fourth and a fifth. And that's going to put us at the top, basically, of that resistance, which is where that sell pressure should come into play. So and at that point, I'd be looking for some sort of a larger correction to fill out. <clears throat> I'd look for a larger correction to fill out in that sense. So since it crashed on me, I'm going to do one last one, you guys, and then I'm going to hop off after this. All right, it looks like we've got, so after Phil there, uh, Morho or Zill USDT or one inch. So one inch we already did. Uh, so I'll do Zill real quick and then we'll call it good, you guys. Um, if we, we can do more inside of the uh, Discord um, over the week and, you know, but uh, I've got a couple of uh, meetings this morning and then I'll be gone uh, out with a friend for the rest of the day. So today I'll probably be pretty vacant after this. All right, you guys, it is a ton of info. So, you know, make sure that you can always slow down the speed too and rewatch it afterwards. Um, I probably won't be able to get timestamps into this today. Uh, so if anybody that rewatches it wants to do timestamps, awesome. I'd appreciate you for that. Uh, but uh, it would definitely probably help out some other people as well in regards to trying to watch this thereafter. So let's go out to a daily on Zill here because I know there's quite a bit of data. Yeah, so this is a this is a good. You can see this big move like that. Those are always third waves, right? So we can simply say this is one, two. This is a three. Either this was a four down here, or we're dealing with a fourth still, and then a five to go. Okay, so let's what what really matters here. We know that our wave one and our two is done. We know that our three is in the works um, and most likely done, given the change of of behavior right here. Okay, so price dropped very aggressively. So we see a change of behavior, we should assume that some sort of a larger correction is taking place uh, and that this previous low down here will now be defended and that we should not revisit it. So really what matters in regards from an Elliott wave perspective and projecting forward the price movement is what the wave structure is right here. Because the way we bounce makes a big difference. If we bounce with five waves, then we're looking at this being a fourth and a fifth. Okay, and we'd have five waves in that fifth wave and that would be awesome. If it's an a corrective structure, we would assume that it's a connector. So we still have another leg to go in regards to finishing off a fourth wave and then getting a bigger fifth wave here. So what matters in this case here is this guy. And we can drop down into a four hour to dissect him real quick. Okay. 
And what you're looking for first and foremost are the three major rules of Elliott Wave. Make sure that they're not broken and you're looking for overlap. Those are the key things that really stand out in regards to some sort of a corrective structure. So we can see that there is a trend line here. We basically broke over that, we found it as support. So we had a change of trend right here at this point down here when we shifted into this. So the question is, is this an impulse or is it corrective? And given how much overlap is in here, right? You've got basically running flats, but there's only so many running flats that you can do before we start encroaching in on the other degree. So yes, this is probably a running flat here, but the way that I see this breaking up right now is more so of just a A, B and a C structure like that. So this would be more of a corrective structure. And we look for this to basically fan out. We're in a fourth wave. This here is an impulse wave. So we still got a fourth and another fifth up to go do to complete the C wave most likely. At that point, I'd be looking for this to basically pull back like that and then try and launch for a bigger fifth wave. Okay, so that's probably where my bias lies um, in regards to this. If we start breaking over, you know, a pretty aggressive fifth wave here, um, then and that B pocket, that B pocket's always the guy that gets you. So something like this. Okay, and a realistic target that we see a lot of resistance at is really that 236 right here. Um, and so maybe seeing that C wave, that fifth wave get a little bit aggressive is something that potentially could happen here. But we're basically looking for, I wouldn't even want it to go this high. I'd want to be somewhere in here, be the rejection mark for this, um, basically in between the previous high here and uh, 10 cents. Okay, so this would be the structure. and we grab a trend extension. Now, because of where we broke this at, we're either pulling from like down here and here. Let's try a one to one there. And we'll also try this pivot here. What we're looking for is we're just looking for confluence in this regards. So one to one does come in right at the at the previous high here at, at 10, 10 1. So that's definitely an area of resist of, of you know interest. And then we've also tagged the one to one in regards to where I pulled the original A wave here. Uh, which was at 0 0.095. So we're seeing some of that resistance now. This could, I don't think that the C wave is done in the sense. I think that 10.1 is a better target uh, and it would probably match up with the 1.236 and that it does. So we've got pretty good confluence there at 10.1 uh, to 10.8 being kind of the max side of this thing in order for this to basically retrace back down okay, and then make a bigger move towards the upside. This would create a channel, something along the lines like this. Okay, uh, that we would retrace back to and then pivot from there. And this would all become a fourth wave correction, which is why I have this guy out here like that, um, and then get a bigger fifth wave. I think that'd be better and more bullish. Um, otherwise, if we just start breaking through here and breaking through that 10.8, I would say that the impulse has already started and that this was some sort of a one, two, one, two down here. And it's just, just choppy and nasty because it's an altcoin and there's just not a big crowd behind it. And Elliott Wave is crowd psychology. So it gets a little bit messier when you deal with these smaller assets. um so you guys thanks so much for tuning in i wish we could have gotten through in all of them but make sure to just show up early next time first come first serve in regards to requests so you can make sure to get on the email list and get email notifications about these you can also just make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and the notification bell off to the right make sure to click all so that you're notified of the next time that we do go live which is every monday and tuesday at 9 a.m mountain standard time you can come and join us so make sure to smash up those likes if you enjoyed the content today and I'll see you guys for the next one. If you're interested in learning Elliott Wave, there's really no better place than right here at New Wave Traders. And I direct all my new members to go and check out a free webinar I've put together at tradethewave.com. Okay, it's a ton of value in that webinar. You can see how the system is applied, see if it's a good fit for you. And there's an exclusive deal at the end that I don't offer anywhere else. So it's worth taking advantage of, especially if you're a new person. So I wish you guys the best of luck. Become an independent trader and live life on your terms. There's really no better opportunity than when it comes to being able to day trade, in my opinion, it changed my life. I'm confident it can change yours if you put in the work. I will see you guys for the next video. Much love, everybody.